much and welcome. Good morning, everybody. I can't explain it, but I know. Good morning, Well, a very good morning, Embassy Church, and welcome. Welcome back to all our ambassadors. We're so glad that you decided to join us this beautiful Sunday morning. We're so excited to be at church, and we're even more excited about you. Well, Tams, just to let you know what's happening for the week here at the Embassy Church, we've got a very special guest that's coming this Wednesday. Wow, awesome. Minister Aaron, all the way from Hillcrest, KwaZulu-Natal. So make sure you're here this Wednesday at 7 p.m. That's right, guys. We're going to be here on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, Aaron, if you don't have anything to do on Friday, especially you at home, get dressed and all roads are leading to Res Life Ministries. We want you to come and join us. Pastor Vernon is preaching there on the 30th of August at 7 p.m. I think we will go with that embassy vibe. Well, Tammy, do you believe that we serve a big God? Absolutely. Do you believe that he does big things? Absolutely. Well, Embassy Church, there's a big announcement that's coming up on the 1st of September. So make sure you're here and you don't want to miss out. Awesome. And this week, Sunday, on the 1st of September, it's Communion Sunday. But we want to encourage you to bring all your flower power. So Aaron, on Sunday, no plain blue shirts. Come on up, bring your florals, be in your brightest because we're going to celebrate a beautiful morning at the Embassy Church. Arrive early, get a good seat, get good parking, 
and bring someone along, guys. Come on. Bring your friends, bring your family, gather them around and join us this coming Sunday. Well, do you know mental health is a very underrated, unspoken of topic? Uh, yeah. So the Embassy Church will be hosting a mental health program on the 31st of August, hosted by Pastor Victor. So make sure you're here and everybody's welcome. Well, guys, that's a wrap from us. But if you missed anything, you know that you can go on all our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and you can go and check out what is happening at the embassy and join us. We're here every Sunday, 7 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and we want to meet you. It's about time. That's it. So, Tams, I think that's it from, from you and I. Absolutely. So, Embassy Church, we just want to wish you a blessed week ahead. May you enjoy this Sunday morning experience. And I think 2024 is your year of Ascent. Amen and good morning, Embassy family, and welcome home. I said welcome home because this is your father's house, amen? Are you glad to be in the presence of God this morning? Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Are you glad to be in the presence of God this morning? Amen. amen. If you're able, won't you stand with us? The Word of God says that we're two or three are in the midst. We're two or three are gathered, God is in the midst. Now, if you look around, there's surely more than two or three of us, amen? So who's in the house? Who's in the house? God is in the room, amen? And more than being in the room, He's in our hearts. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is victory and there is power for miracles. So if you're expecting this morning, won't you lift your hands above your head and give the Lord a clap offering, amen? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, God is in the room. God is in the room. God is in the room. Amen.
conscience with me. He lives inside. Just go and stand, you live. Our God will bring you out, and He will testify. He shuts the lion's mouth. Go ask those Hebrew boys if you will stick by your side. They will identify the fourth man in the fire. They'll tell you. Oh, oh,
Church, I see you've got your praise this morning. Let's continue to give God all that he deserves. Amen. Yeah.
together. Say Yahweh. 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 And holy is your name. Holy is your name. I don't name. wanna take it in vain. I don't wanna take it in vain. Your name, your name, your name is Yahweh.
on, Charles. Just grab those hands. Come on. Yeah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Yeah, come on, church. I'll praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. Yeah. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Yeah. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drown. Yeah. Come on. As long as I'm breathing.
Come on, you can do better than that. Let everything, Let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let everything, Let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Won't you give him all the praise this morning? You've got breath within you. You gotta give him all the praise. You're alive this morning. You gotta give him all the praise. You have hands and feet. You have eyes. You have ears. You have hair on your head. And even if you don't, it's fine because he once gave you hair. But you know what? You are here this morning. Amen. Amen. You could have been somewhere else. You could have been in an accident. You could have been, you could have woken up late, you know? Just one minute delay, but you know what? God brought you here this morning. And that is the amazing thing. If anything, you can even go home after this. No, I'm joking. But if anything, we are alive. We are awake. You just got to be thankful for the little things. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't you greet your neighbor? Give them a smile. High five. Say, we're glad to see you this morning. Yes, you can take your seats. And I'm going to give you your announcements this morning. But before I do, I just want to welcome any first-time visitors. I do have a few here. Um, Samantha, Nomsa, and Doda. If you're in the house, just give me a wave, royal wave. Woo! Samantha, Doda, and Nomsa. Oh, right at the back. Why, man? Why? But you know what? We're glad you're here. We just want to say thank you for coming through this morning. And we hope to see you again. And you know what? Next time, come a little further, you know? Come, come. Sorry, sorry. Come a little closer. <laughs> Send me further. Come a little closer. Come sit here in the row. And then you know what? You'll just breathe the praise of God. Amen. All right. Your announcements for um, this morning. Um, this Wednesday, we have a special guest all the way from Upper Highway. I got it right this time. Upper Highway. Now, he said he missed us. That is why we said, you know what, we, we want to miss him too. So, uh, Minister Aaron Ramlakan will take us through a powerful teaching on the pattern of purpose. So, be here. Service starts at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. So, you do not want to miss this teaching. Amen. Okay, all roads lead to Res Life International this Friday. So let's go with our pastor, our spiritual father, Pastor Vernon Jacob, this Friday, 30th of August at 7 p.m. Even if you made plans, cancel. Cancel, okay? You need to be there. Amen. Where two or three are gathered in the house of the Lord. And then a big, big announcement. And I say big, big announcement is coming it affects everybody. If you are a member of this house, if you are family in this house, this, is, this one's for you. Do not miss out. Because when we talk about it, you're not going to hear about it. I'm not going to tell you anything. I don't know about anyone else. But you need to be here. The 1st of September, 2024, be here at the embassy. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't jump, but uh, I'm very excited. And talking about the 1st of September, it is a new month, a new season. Listen, God has taken us through eight months of the year. We've got a few more to go. That does not exempt you from being in the house of the Lord. And the 1st of September, it's spring. You're about to go into a season of blooming. Flowers will come out. You could get that, that smell of pollen, fresh grass all over. You, you know what? And that means you must put on the brightest of colors. Flowers, you want to wear a flower in your hair, you go ahead. You do your thing, okay? But come dressed as spring, right? And then get the best seat here in the house. Come early. We have two services on Sunday, 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., right? And then on Saturday, 31st of August, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., Pastor Victor will be holding a mental health program at the embassy. All are welcome to attend. It's a provoking discussion and raising awareness about issues and matters of the heart. Um, listen, mental health is, 
it's, it's all over. It's, it's happening, people are saying they, they, there's, there's something in the mind, but we're gonna reach out from a spiritual aspect of it to show them that you need God and nothing will affect your mind. Hallelujah. So won't you put your hands together for Minister Aaron as he does your offering. Let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. What Shiri is trying to say that the season of sinus is coming. Uh, and that's uh, the next season. So we're all going to be sniffing and doing what we need to do in, 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 in the sinus season. Amen. <laughs> Ladies, are you enjoying your month of August? It's coming to an end as well. I'm so excited that it's coming to an end. Uh, I told my wife for the month of August, you do not wash the dishes and the clothes. Just wash the clothes, not both. Uh, so I um, thank God that is ending so she can do both again. <laughs> Amen. Are you ready to give? Uh, before I do, I want to remind you, you need to be here this Wednesday. I'm talking about the pattern of purpose. And uh, I'm going to show you how purpose is the only natural ingredient for energy. Purpose is the only natural ingredient for energy. And that before there was a manufacturer for Apple and Samsung, there was a manufacturer. A manufacturer. A manufacturer. Amen. And when he manufactured you, he did not put a logo or label on you. He put an image on you. Oh, you got to be here Wednesday. 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 So when anyone see that image... They say, Amen. Amen. Uh, they're talking about the season change, and I just want to let you know that the natural season changes uh, based on the clock and based on creation when God ordained it to change. Uh, you can do whatever you want. It will still change based on how God made it to change. Uh, but seasons in your life will change based on what you do. What you do will change your season, whether you want it for the good or for the bad. And I came this morning to give you a word for the season that you are about to enter in. If you're quick in the spirit, you're going to catch it. And you're going to apply this word in your life. Psalms 20, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. And it says, God answer you on the day you crash. The name God of Jacob put you out of harm's reach. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, I'm out of the reach of the devil. Send reinforcements from the holy hill. Dispatch fresh, fresh supplies from Zion. I'm trusting God for fresh supplies in the next season of my life. And here it is, exclaim over your offerings. In other words, God is going to shout over what you give Him. We normally shout over what God gives us. But He's saying in the next season, I'm going to shout over what you give me. Celebrate your sacrifices and give you what your heart desires. God is saying in this season, I'm going to celebrate those that give in the midst of their trouble. I'm going to celebrate those that give in the midst of their storm. That's what he's saying. Uh, to enter into many rooms, you need many keys. And this is the key to enter into your heart's uh, desire. Here's what it says. I am going to accomplish your plans. I'm not sure who has plans for their career. I'm not sure who has plans for their job. I'm not sure who has plans for their ministry or who has plans for their building. But I came to tell you this in verse 5. When you win, tell your neighbor when you win. When you win, here it is, the year of ascent. We're going to raise the roof. We're going to raise the roof. The roof of your career is about to be raised in the next season that is to come. The roof of your building is about to be raised in the next season. The roof of your business is about to be raised in the next season. Oh, this word is prophetic. If you catch it, it's about to take place in your life. And here's what it says. And lead the parade with our banners. May all your wishes come true. 
God is saying, I'm about to do something in your life in the next season. And it's going to happen through what you give. Now the praise and worship is going to worship in a few minutes. But I want you and God to decide. Whether you want to give like you are struggling. Or you want to give and believe where God is taking you. You decide. You decide what you want in the next season of your life. You want God to send you fresh supplies. You want God to bring the desires of your heart to pass. You want God to keep you out of harm's reach. You want God to raise the roof of your business and your job. You decide what you want to give God. God already said, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. You know what a big thing it is? For God to celebrate what you give. To celebrate your sacrifices. Oh, are you ready to give this morning? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. I pray this morning, oh God, that you will raise the roof of the finances of your people. I pray, oh God, that you will raise the roof of their business. I pray that you will raise the Lord of their ministry. Whatever they are trusting you for, I pray today, oh God, and I come against every financial distraction that will settle upon your people. I pray today, oh God, and I say none will take away the provision that you have for them. In the next season, we will enter, oh God, with abundance. We will enter, oh God, with overflow. We will enter with more than enough. I speak it in the atmosphere and establish grounds in the life of your people to be fruitful. Oh, you said we will be planted by the river banks. Oh, we will flourish, oh Lord, like a cedar in Lebanon. I pray today, oh God, that we will flourish in every part of our life as we come to give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Holy Spirit. Thank you that we can see the evidence of your goodness in our lives, Lord. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where. I want you to take one moment wherever you stand just lift up your voice to him let your life be an aerial of attraction for his presence this morning if you don't know what to say just declare your love for him and say lord i love you lord i worship you i adore you let my words be an attraction oh god for your presence to my life i thank you that i'm not on a ventilating machine i thank you this morning that uh, my own two feet have carried me into your presence. It is with joy that I stand before you today, O oh God. Circumstances could be otherwise, but I thank you that you are the lifter of my head. Just worship him. Give out words of worship in 60 seconds this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to stand in your presence and to sit under your word. Take away the Martha life from us and produce a merry devotion now. That we will, Lord, move away from our busyness and move into your business. Help us this morning, O oh God, to comprehend your word because it will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Remove every distraction, O oh God, that will take away our attention from what you have to say to us. Whether, Lord, it is a cell phone, a message through it, or whatever, Lord, serves as a distraction, I denounce it in Jesus' name. And I release your spirit 
keep this atmosphere fresh as we give you thanks in Jesus name and everybody said amen God bless you this morning as you take your seats I want to greet you if you're visiting us for the very first time thank you for making this your preferred place of worship if you join us online thank you for being intentional and for connecting with us may you be blessed I started three weeks is this the third week eh? three weeks ago I started a let's talk series it kind of gave me permission just to bounce about everywhere and not just be confined to one um, thought, okay? And then the theme is uh, just saying. So I'm just saying. We, we're trying to build a church that um, is connected for longevity, that as we grow, we grow as a family, and we have total understanding of a culture. Um, we're trying to also set a platform for the culture on which we stand this is how we uh, grow in the things of the Spirit. Amen? Uh, it's okay for you to shout amen. 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 Uh, on Friday, if you would like to join me, I'm going to Pastor Joey Governor's church. We're going to be ministering there at Res Life International. And so you are all welcome. Let's, let's travel together. Let's go together uh, and have a good time. They're, they're expecting you. So uh, don't disappoint them by not pitching up, all right? God bless you. Now, I'm going to pick it up from last week, and then I'm going to go into today's uh, word. Last week, I touched on covenant relationships and how some relationships are extremely important that you maintain it. You can't drain yourself from it. Uh, in order for you to maintain them, sometimes you have to swallow your pride, humble yourself, and never fight that relationship. There are some relationships um, you just have to stay in it. Uh, your pride and ego must be swallowed and you must uh, stick in it. There are some soils and grounds in which you flourish. You must discern it and never disconnect from that soil. I uh, used uh, agar who was carrying Abraham's child, although she was a handmaiden to Sarah, uh, she was still carrying the child of covenant. God was going to use her womb to produce the child of covenant. Uh, so that's a, an important relationship. No matter what goes on inside of the, the happenings of that relationship, she needs to swallow her pride and stay in the place of that covenant. But one day she has a little tiff with Sarai. And Sarai um, kind of offends her. And so she picks up everything and says, I'm leaving. And on her way, God sends an angel. And the angel says to Sarai, where are you coming from? And where are you going? Yeah. He intercepts her and he tells her, you go right back. Because you can't go with something so big into a place so small. So she has to swallow her pride and eat her ego and go right back to the place of covenant. Some places God has ordained your feet to be in. Don't remove it from there until God tells you to do otherwise. Are we together this morning? And so um, never depart from your destiny because of light afflictions. You'll have some challenges, some small troubles, but don't leave something so big over something so small. That's a good tweet. I think they're Xing now. Is that places of Xs? You can tweet that, Melanie. Don't leave something so big over something so small. Did you get it? How did you get it? Are you recording? Melanie tweets before I even preach it. All right. I also spoke about El Bethel last week towards the end of the service. Know your Bethel. That's a good, if you're writing a song, you should write that song. Know your Bethel. Know your Bethel. Jacob is uh, one that is blessed. And uh, let's just read, read that. God spoke to Jacob and said, go back to Bethel, 
Stay there and build an altar to the God who revealed himself to you when you were running for your life from your brother Esau. Jacob took something from Esau called the birthright blessing and he gave it to him for a pot of stew. There was no, no dumplings in the stew as well. For a small bowl of lentil soup, he took so much of a birthright and Jacob knew he did wrong. It affected the relationship and Jacob started to run from Esau. Esau started to pursue him until he couldn't find him. Uh, Jacob was running scared inside of the relationship for his brother. He never came face to face with his brother after he stole his birthright and he knew his brother is going to slay him. So he was hiding from his brother. All the time, hiding from his brother and praying for this relationship to mend. One day, Jacob comes and he has this divine encounter with God. And there's angels running to and fro. Immediately after that altar at Bethel, he gets a piece to meet his brother. And Esau is coming from another direction. He thinks Esau is, he wants to test this relationship. So he sends his servants, even puts his wives in front of him uh, to see whether Esau will kill them so he could be protected. He was testing the relationship, whether it had healed. I'm trying to show you that whilst Jacob was running, he wasn't sure if the relationship was healed, but that altar healed that relationship. After he has that encounter at that altar, even when he meets his brother, he, doesn't re he didn't realize that the altar already ministered to his brother and healed the relationship. I'm trying to show you that some things you are praying for is already healed at your altar. There will come a time when you will meet what you were praying for and you will realize that the altar has already sponsored the answer to which you are praying. Never underestimate the power of your prayer at an altar. Now Jacob is, is going through some challenges and God says to him in the midst of his challenge, go back to Bethel. That's where I'll meet you. Know the altars that sponsor your blessings. And sometimes when you're so blessed, you run away from the altar. I'm trying to show you this morning that you don't have to endure unnecessary trouble if you stay in Bethel. Some of you, you come to Bethel and then you run from it when you got your answer. And then you come into questions and you seek more answers. And where you are is where you shouldn't be. You need to go back to Bethel. God spoke to Jacob and said, what? Go back to Bethel. As a church, you must understand where your Bethel is. And if you keep living your life, ignoring the solutions that God has for you, then you'll consistently be in problems which will cause you to go back to Bethel. Rather stay in Bethel and be free of all of them. Oh, God. Why do you want to pray unnecessary prayers over unnecessary problems when you can stay in the place of solutions? Somebody touch your neighbor and say, go back to battle. Somebody needs you to preach to them because they're not listening to my voice. Tell them, go back to Bethel. Yes. All right. This morning, I want to talk on relationships. That was last week's. If you didn't come on last week, I just want to, that was for you, uh, but also just to refresh. 
us. We're talking about relationships and this morning I want to talk to you about uh, different types of relationships that will help you in life. Let me lay this as a platform on relationships. Most things in life advances, advances on the basis of relationships. You go forward based on, on the relationships you have. Some relationships you have are pulling you backwards. Plants and animals multiply by proximity and relationships. Plants and animals, uh, the pollen from, we're talking about spring, the pollen from this flower when the wind comes blows over to the next flower. Proximity is very important. Uh, relationships is very, for you to multiply, you need to be inside of relationships. You can't be like an island surrounded by a sea. Or let me say this, you can't be an island of prosperity surrounded by a sea of poverty. Because sooner or later, the waves from that sea of poverty will blow into your island of prosperity. We together. We need relationships. We need to be good to people. And people will be good to us. We need, we need people. Oh, yeah, some of you don't believe that. I just want to touch on plants. You multiply by proximity. That's more, that means in a relationship that God has put you in, uh, you, you multiply by that. God planted Adam and Eve and the garden. Or he planted the garden and he put Adam and Eve in the garden. Are you with me? Uh, the Bible says that it should be, be fruitful. Fruitful, God blessed them and God said to them two things. By being fruitful, you can also multiply your life. That's not necessarily only for conception. Because you can't have a baby every nine months. You can't be multiplying. You're not a manufacturing industry. And you're not a cow. You understand? So the multiplication there is to multiply in life as well. Uh, so it's not only for conception, it's all of, also for collaboration. I, we, you, husband and wife, two are better than one. Uh, you can lie down and you can produce your own heat. The, the fruit of your labor multiplies if you collaborate. So okay, I'm trying to show you that it's not just fruitful through conception. You're also fruitful through collaboration by two people coming together. If any two of you, there's a power of that by that. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, two are better than one. So there's that fruitful and you are not just uh, so in conception and collaboration. So you're not just a mate. You're a help mate. Can you see there's multiply and fruitfulness. Ah. Hallelujah. And in order for that relationship to flourish, there must be proximity. I just want to talk about proximity because we're talking. Proximity means uh, that we we in closeness. Proximity allows you access. But if the proximity, if the access is abused, it becomes familiarity. And I want to tell you about the danger of spiritual familiarity. In Matthew, uh, the Bible says that Jesus did many miracles, but when he was in Nazareth, he could do no mighty works. Why? Because they said about Jesus, isn't this the carpenter's son? They never saw him as the son of God. They used a physical relationship, but trying to get spiritual Benefits. You can never, never become familiar with a person physically and expect the blessing spiritually. You're joking. In Second Chronicles, there's a situation with Uzziah. Uzziah, he's the king. Nobody preached to him about spiritual familiarity. So what happened was, he took the incense and he went into the temple 
and he wanted to light incense. As a king, he thought that he has authority in the land to do spiritual things. I'm talking about familiarity in the spiritual realm. He got so close to the priests, he thought, well, the priests can't, can't tell me what to do. I'm the king. So he took the incense and he went into the holy place. Eighty priests came after him with authority and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm lighting incense to God. And they said, but it is not your function as a king. It is the priest who does that. You have become so familiar. And immediately leprosy came upon him. Because he became familiar with a spiritual atmosphere. Uh, I rise this morning and a, a long time ago I had this revelation about uh, spiritual familiarity. Do you want the anointing of a friend to touch you? Or do you want the anointing of a pastor to be upon you? Yes. So you cannot become so familiar with your pastor, although he gives you access via WhatsApp and all of those things, there still needs to be the level of respect. Because the anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. Let me say that again. The anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. Anything that you disrespect will exit your life. Even to the point of dogs, you disrespect your dog, it will leave you. You love your dog, it will be attracted to you. Anything that you respect is drawn towards you. Anything that you disrespect will finally exit your life. Proximity versus relationship. If proximity is abused, it becomes familiarity. And the world says familiarity breeds contempt. Are we together? So um, we must watch our relationships. Now many times, uh, you like me, I'm a movement by myself. I'm a movement all by myself. But I'm a force when we are together. We are movements by ourselves. Please don't think that you, you can do everything together. You need people around you. Especially in, 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 in teams. Especially when you're in, in praise and worship. You try singing without having the keyboard and the drummer. Each one needs to come together. So you're a movement by yourself, but you are a force together. Now, this morning I want to talk to you about five relationship patterns you need in your lifetime, and then by the time I'm done, KFC will open. So I'll keep you here till your favorite uh, breakfast place opens or spur. I hear you say spur, okay. Five relationship patterns you need in your life. As a class, we're going we're gonna to talk, okay? Because you said, let's talk. Number one, say destiny helpers. Help. Shout it out, we need. I can't hear you, we need. Number two, you need divine connectors. Say that with me. Number three, you need influences around you. Yes. Number four, gifted men and women. And number five, you need burden bearers. All together, one, two, three, four, five. Say it from the top to the bottom. And then we go to the next slide uh, on the count of three. Three, two, one. In your circle of life, you need these people. Whenever they come into your life, don't despise them. Keep them all in their place. 
Now your mind is like your house. I can't tell you where to put your toilet. You can put it if you want to put it in the kitchen, then you can have an end suite in the kitchen. That's how you design in your home. But wherever you want to have your stove, that's your life. But I'm telling you, these are people you need in your life. You need to put them in their place. And people must be put. Okay, you said it, I didn't say it. Let's go on. <laughs> Jesus had circles, friendship circles. And he knew how to put them in their place. He had the multitudes to which those attended his, his uh, crusades. And he fed them fish and bread and fed them things. You understand? So the Bible says that, there's, that he fed multitudes. Mark chapter 3 verse 13, let's start with that. Jesus went up to a mountainside, are you with me? And he called to him those he wanted. And they came to him, referring to his 12 disciples. So he had his 12. Luke chapter 9, 28 says, About eight days after Jesus had said these things, he took with him Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. So on one mountain, he took 12. On the Mount of Transfiguration, he took three. The other eight must have said at a, at a council meeting and said, uh, Last time he took us up the mountain, but why is he not taking up this mountain? I'm trying to improve your maturity levels. I'm trying to show you that it's a circle, not a click. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you call it clicks when you're not in it, but when you're in it, you call it a group. <laughs> I'm coming for you. We have, to, we have to change our mindsets. We have to change our paradigms. If you can understand this, you won't get upset when you're not invited for that wedding. John 6, 15. Then Jesus, realizing that, that they were about to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Can you see some people like to be by themselves because of situations by which they are going through? You need some solitary. The Bible says as when Jesus learned about uh, uh, John the Baptist's death, he withdrew and went into solitary. There is a time for people to grieve. Allow them to grieve. Allow people days, uh, the one to have a day off. Without getting into their space and saying, no. what happened? They just go into, tomorrow they'll be okay. Though sorrow is for a... Joy will come in the... Joy will come in the... Morning. The Bible says, though sorrow is for a night, joy may come in the morning. Allow them two more days. Give them one more extra morning just to, just to be themselves. I've learned that. Don't push it like. Is this helping somebody? Okay. John 21, 20. I still got 13 slides. Please stay with me. John 21, 20. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. Oh, by the way, if you, if you go and study John 21, Peter saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. Peter saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. Peter assumes that Jesus got favorites. And I'll tell you why. Peter assumes this because in the context of what Peter is going through, 
Sometimes people don't hear what you say. They interpret what you say. So you get all offended, not by what you heard, but what you interpret. John 21, 17, it's not in my notes, but can you, can you bring that up quickly? John 21, 17, I'm teaching this morning. John 21, that's 20. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. Yes. Jesus said to Simon, the same Peter, he said to him the third time, Simon, do you love me? The topic here is about who is loving who. Who's loving who? Tell me who is loving who. Are you loving me or am I loving you? Tell me who. The whole topic between Peter and... So it's in Peter's spirit now. Who do you love more? Are we together? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, he asked Peter, do you love me? Watch Peter's response. And Peter said to him, you know all things. Have you ever been between a husband and a wife and you never got the right what you're asking for, but you know everything? It's in the Bible. It's biblical, this conversation. Oh, you know everything. So why are you asking me, do you lie? You know everything. <laughs> it's in your Bible. It's not even in the Message Bible. It's in the King James Version. You know everything. He said, you know all things. You know that I love you. But I don't know that you love me. Peter, I don't know. I know you know that I love you. But you're asking me for three times. Some of you are not assured of the love for you. That's why you're so insecure. You must just know I am loved. Some of you have a, a Leah mentality. What's a Leah mentality? You know that Jacob is with you, but you're not confident. You feel that his love for Rachel is more. So you, you're not convinced about love. Leah knew that she was loved, but she didn't feel that she was valued. And that's why, listen to me men, that, that's why she felt... She, she knew that he's with her. She knew that she's loved. But she didn't feel that she was valued. That's deep. Wow. So, so go back to my, my... I got 13 more slides. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and said, Lord, who is going to betray you? Now at this table, John is on Jesus' bosom and he's got his head on Jesus' bosom. Peter is not there. Why are they mentioning this, all of this? Peter is a bit upset with the relationship and the proximity that John and John knows how to rub it into because he writes in John and I John the beloved <laughs> if I wrote the gospel I would also write the one whom he loved each one is fighting jostling for positions I'm trying to show you that your heart can, can suffer unnecessary pain when you have all of those things like, who's one, who's number two, who's number three, and why am I number four, and why has he got his head on his, is he homosexual? 
because you try to tend to, 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 to make sweet situations bitter, not because of what the situation is, but because of the water that flows through your heart. And you can turn something so sweet into something so bitter. And the problem is not all around us, it's all inside of you. Many relationships that you are judging is not the problem with that relationship, but if you could just examine yourself. When Peter saw him, he asked, watch, watch how this thing is going, what about him? <laughs> you need to discern relationships and whose voices you listen to because people can make you reject somebody. They want you to reject people. People. And the situation here is about who's going to betray you. And Peter is trying to put it through a voice in Jesus' ears. What about him? Business people, listen to me. There are some people rising and God needs them at your table. Be careful for the fourth voice against the person that's third on your seat. You must have discernment. In relationships, you must discern well the voices of people around you. Discern well the actions of people around you. Not everybody is happy when you are ha happy. Are you together this? Are we together this morning? All right. Now let's go for the types of people that are around us. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. These are people who are commissioned and ordained by God to assist you in your advancement and in the actualization of your destiny. People who God will raise to cause you to go forward. God brings those kind of people. They, these are like um, scaffolds when you're doing a building. They, they help you at a certain level. And then after it's done, you can bring, bring that down. They've accomplished their task. Are we together? 1 Kings 17 verse 8 and 9, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain you. Listen to me, church. This is Elijah at a brook. In a time of drought, God causes him to quench his thirst through a brook that's flowing. He causes the brook to flow. And to sustain him with his meat, he causes a bird to bring birds to feed him. But there's a thing about miracles. It cannot be sustained in a realm like the earthly realm. Miracles are just miracles for a, for a time. He can't rain manna for, from heaven for us like he did for 40 years. As a matter of fact, I think that was too long, 40 years. Miracles um, have to be sustained and proved by signs. Signs confirms it's a miracle. But scientifically, you can't consistently live on a miracle. So the birds were not made to feed you. So he says, the birds are not going to fly and the brook is, not, is going to become dry. I preach a message one day, what you going to do when the birds don't fly and the brook go dry? What you going to do when the birds don't fly and don't bring you? You have to go, but trust God that He's going to take you to a place where whatever He started, He will Finish. So he takes him, Aaron, to this place called Zarephath and he puts it into this woman's spirit. I said this this morning, 
that people who are destined to help you, God puts it in their spirit. Even if, he, if they don't want to help you, He programs it in their spirit. Sometimes don't be surprised by some people who you don't like, but they like to help you. And they don't want to help you too because this woman of Zarephath, she didn't want to feed him because she had her last meal and her last flask of, of water. And so she wants to sustain herself, but then he says, give me some water to drink and go make me some food. And reluctantly, inconsequentially, she does what she has to do. Destiny helpers are raised by God to sustain you. Have you ever given an offering in church and you went home and said, I don't know how, why I gave such a big offering. The Spirit of God speaks to people. The Spirit of God comes into you and programs your spirit. And if it's spiritual, you do something that you don't want to do naturally. The woman of Zarephath, she gave him a last meal. She fed him and God took over and blessed her. I'm trying to show you that destiny helpers are people that God raises to help your destiny. Say amen. Now, now Gideon is God. Gideon is surrounded by the Midianite army, and uh, this is going to be in trouble. And God says, "Gideon, uh, I'm going to be with you in this battle. For me to prove that I'm with you, you don't have to have so many men. Cut your men down from twenty thousand. So Gideon cuts it down to ten thousand." thinking that that's how many men he needs. And God says, Gideon, I'm going to be with you. You don't need so many men. Cut it down. So he says, how do I choose? Listen to me. How do I choose from these 10,000 men? He says, take them down to the water. Don't tell them anything. Tell them to drink. Those that go down like dogs and lap the water, Choose them because I only want 300. And he puts that kind of uh, wisdom into, he, he programs those people 300, 300 to the, to the count. He programs them. When you go down to the water, this is how you drink. Go down like a dog. I want to talk to all the people that want to serve in God's army. When you volunteer for serving, they'll treat you like a dog. It's not, not easy to serve God and still have the comforts. If you don't want to give up your comforts, stay. Don't stay in the 10,000. Because only a few can carry a clay pot with a lamp and oil and keep it and walk in one hand. And hold a trumpet in the other hand. It's not easy. You have to lose the Gucci and put on your jeans. Sometimes when you're going to serve, it, it, it. what time you came to church this morning? Six o'clock. You got up what time? Three o'clock. Three. You're going to have to, to serve God, you're going to have to lap water like a dog. And when you lap water like a dog, they'll treat you like a dog. Please know that if you are in Gideon's army, the rank that you are in, it's not easy to serve. And, and, and most of the time, the hurt comes when you are serving. And when you serve with Peter. And you've got to contend with the other eight guys. It's not easy when they're jostling for I'm talking, you, you see where I'm going? But you say, but, but these are disciples. They're not yet disciplined. Are we together this morning? And so don't, don't come into a place of serving. Don't come into the army. Know whether you're in the 20,000, the 10,000, or the 300. Know whether you are going to be in the multitude, the 72, the 12, the, the 3, or the 1. Or the one alone. 
We together this morning. Many of you think ministry is, is so glorious. You see the glory, you don't know the story. Yeah. Everybody wants a platform, but they don't want to be formed. Okay, let's go on. Uh, divine connectors. You have divine connectors. Now, these people cannot solve your problem, but they can point you in the direction of those who can. Those are divine connectors. God brings those people in your lives. Divine connectors. Say amen if you, if you, if you know of some of those people. Now, some of those people in the Bible is Naaman's slave girl. Naaman is going through leprosy. He is the highest ranking a general, but he's got a, a leprosy. The Bible says, but he had leprosy. And the person that knew the solution to this said, uh, she just came, she was just captured from Samaria. And she said to um, <clears throat> uh, the, the Naaman's wife, I wish that my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover from his leprosy. She holds the key to his healing. She's a divine connector. Are we together this morning? If you only respect people of your pedigree and class, you may be left lying in wait for your healing and your solution. Don't despise people who are not in your suburb. Don't mistreat people who don't smell like you, dress like you, look like you, live like you. Uh, you could be a high-ranking officer, but there can be one thing that uh, you may need, and they may have the key to that door. Are we together this morning? There was a man that was paralyzed. He was, he was doing well, but suddenly his blood pressure went up. It hit his blood vessel in his head. You never know when something like that can happen and you can have a stroke. You'll need some people to carry you. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the, through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. You never know when you will need four men with their mat to carry you and lower you in the place of your need. Are we together this morning? Don't just respect your pedigree. Pharaoh, Pharaoh's chief baker and chief butler was thrown in prison for an offense. I'm not sure what they did. But Joseph is also imprisoned in that same prison over a fake charge. I'm, some, you need to listen to me. Some of you, listen, some things will happen to you and it could be totally irrelevant to it happening to you in that time. Joseph is falsely accused and is thrown into a prison to meet the butler and the baker so that they will have a dream and he will interpret their dream so that then they are released, they go back into Pharaoh's courts and Pharaoh will have a dream and uh, uh, Pharaoh doesn't have the interpretation of the dream. So the baker and the butler will say, when we were in prison, we came across this guy called Joseph and he interpreted that dream. So Pharaoh will say, Open the gates of the prison and bring Joseph to me. It's a transportation through a butler and a baker. 
don't underestimate the two years that you are in prison that will save you in speed with transportation to the king's palace. Oh, you think you wasted your time for two or three years in the prison, but you could work for a lifetime and not reach the palace. Romans 8, 28, and we know then that all things are working together for our good. You are falsely accused, put in this prison only to meet some destiny helpers, some divine connectors to connect you. That not the prison, uh, uh, not those butler and the baker are the connectors, but also the place. Some of you are in a place and you can't understand why you in that prison. That place is your divine connection. Oh yes. If they never stole your license at the robot, you would never go to Rosborough Station for making the application and meeting a divine connector who will connect you to a tender that's worth millions and you suffering over the one license. And we then know that all things work together for good. <laughs> Examine the situations going on in your life and uh, just wait and you'll see that God is divinely connecting. For those who love and serve him, he allows all things to work together for good. So he's even allowing adversity to turn the adversity into... Oh, you, are we together this morning? Don't despise the situations of divine connections. Are we learning? The next thing you need is people of influence. People of influence. These people have years of, years of the systems and structure. This is powerful. These people have years of the systems and structure that you need. These are the esters of life. In sitting in high places. Sitting in high places. And when you need the connections, they're there for you. Are we together? People in, in government that can open doors that will never open for you. You need Esther's in your life. So don't demise, don't demean Nathan, Naaman's slaves, but also know that you need Mordecai's niece. The spirit and the bride. There are, there, are, there are systems that must say yes to you. There are structures that have to say yes to us. Otherwise we can't move on. And we need God to cause these Esthers to go and speak for us. Are we together? Now, there must be, Judy, an appropriate yes in the heaven and a yes on the earth. The, the spirit and the bride must say yes. If the bride says, if the church says no and the spirit says yes, as it is in heaven can't be on earth. As it is in heaven must be with an amen on the earth. Are we together this morning? So there must be a corresponding yes on the earth. That's how people of influence work. You must pray for people of influence to say yes to us. The next type of persons you need is gifted men and women. People of skill and of excellence. The assignment of these people is to produce efficiency in your life. Yes. Listen to me. Global, corporate, global corporations are successful today because they have mastered the art of bringing together skillful people. Academics. 
Cheap is not what you pay. Cheap is what you get. Let me say that again. Cheap is not what you pay. Cheap is what you get. And we go for the, for the least quote. Because they gave it to you on, on, on recycled paper. They gave you the quote. If you check behind, they save in paper. So they gave you somebody else's what they printed out. Old paper that you're supposed to throw away. The back side of it is what they use for a quote. And they gave you a cheap quote. And you want to know what you need is gifted men. You need sharp people. Like, like in this building, I need people, if, there is, if, the, if the water was shut down, you need people to go around and shut off each tap, check each tap. Because on Friday night to Monday morning, if that tap runs, and, or to Sunday morning, if that tap runs, how much of water you, you left? But you hired cheap people who don't care. No, what you need is gifted and skilled people around you. I'm talking relationships. So you're trying to save money, but you are losing more money by going for cheap instead of going for efficient and skilled. That's why in Daniel, they brought four Hebrew boys that were masters, Shadrach. They called him Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Daniel. You need people who will limit waste and increase profits. Let me say that again. Anything that is not spent is profit. So there you are, keep spending. And you're thinking my profits are down. Anything that is not spent is profit. I don't know what we're talking, right? When I first started work, it was just in my mind, I needed to put in built-in cupboards. I just started teaching. I had no expenses. I could put in that built-in cupboards if I just waited for three months Saved my whole, I didn't have any expenses. I just got money. But I remember those days, I went to a bank called NRB, New Republic Bank. It was in Chatsworth, Unit 5, behind where, where the, the checker center is. I don't know why, but I took a loan. And they gave me a loan. I didn't need it, but in my mind... It was like, you can't do something cash. So I took a loan. And I paid off a loan over 18 months. Small amounts. When you calculated the loan, you paid three times what you borrowed. Whereas in, even if I negotiated with the, with the carpenter for three months, treat it as cash, I could have done it. But my mindset didn't have a skill set. Yeah. Nobody preached to me and gave me wisdom and said, if you just wait for three months, and the wedding was six months later. The bride is only coming six months later. You remember? Yeah. I put a nice, they call it those days, the color was wine color, maroon color carpet. Remember, uh, it was a, uh, what was the name of the carpet? Um, was was a beautiful carpet. Not a fun dyke. That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for those <laughs> fun dyke carpets, but this was okay. I'll get it. But it had that f that fluff. And those days, everybody had maroon carpets. I don't know whether you remember that the era of maroon. All right. So it was in style. Cream carpets. Beautiful. You open the the, where the mirror was, and then there's a drawer there. But the point I'm trying to make is that I took a loan for something that I didn't need a loan for. Nobody tells us these things, that you'll pay three times more for it by getting entrapped 
into that. We need gifted people, people who will speak to us and say, no, Vimal, uh, why, why are you going that route? Is, there is another route. You need to get skilled people around you. You need to get people who are gifted with experience into that place uh, where they will help you with profits, not with spends. Uh -huh. We're together this morning. Don't just rush into business without reading a business book because everybody else is into business. Read business, read books. It'll, it'll teach you. You need gifted men, skill and, I can't hear you, skill and excellence. And the last point is this one. Are, are, we, are we together? Burden bearer. Some of you like stories like, and it started with the, with the carpet, everybody like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that on now. <laughs> we mustn't have that kind of church. What church is that, Gregory? <laughs> Burden bearers. Let me come to grace carriers. Carriers for the day of your adversity, and then I'm done. For the day of your adversity. Your adversity is not for every day. You don't go to the cross every day. But the day you have to go to your cross, you need a Simon of Cyrene to help you carry your cross up the Via Dolorosa, the street that Jesus walked, up towards Golgotha. You need people like that. Jesus had four ladies and one man, John the Beloved, that proves his love. We speak about all of those things, whether he loved Jesus. The people that really love you are not sitting at your table, but they are sitting at the feet of your cross. That's how you know John is the beloved. Not everybody is called to be your burden bearers. Many will eat your food at the crusades. They'll eat the fish and the loaves. But will they be your burden bearers and be at the feet of your cross? Jesus had four ladies. Three were Marys. If your name is Mary, you're a burden bearer. Uh, how come there's three Marys and then the sister of Jesus' mother, Mary, was there. Four ladies, one man, John. If you've got a friend called John, keep him. I told you that the last time. John Hasty is here. John is a good name to have. I realized the potential in names. When I gave a tribute at my auntie's funeral last week, Saturday, her name is Sarah. And she lived for 96 years of age. Like the Sarah in the Bible. Sarah in the Bible is the only lady, go check your Bible, is the only lady where they give the number to her years. She lived 127 years. If you've got a name called Sarah, you are going to live long. Cancel your insurance policies. Do whatever you have to do, but with long life, he will satisfy you. Sarah. Yeah. If you've got a name like Sarah, be, be careful. Take your contraceptives if you don't want to have children because at 76, you will bear a child. <laughs> oh, yes. See how they came alive now, Gregory? <laughs> Be careful what you name your children. Yeah. We're together this morning. And there's this. When you call those children, you call the biblical prophecy into those children's lives. When you say, Judah, come here. You're saying, praise, come here. Judah, come. Judah, come. Judah, come. That's praise. Come. Uh, when you have your babies, don't name them for how it sounds. It's not just cute that you want. Eve was given. I was going to talk about it. It was not just a beauty, but it was also a strength. Not for just con conception, beauty, but collaboration. Bone of my bone. Bone means I'm there to, I'm your structure to help you. Skeletal systems give you structure. So he was happy to see her. Oh, you are woman. He was happy with her beauty. But then he also said, you are my collaboration. Oh, God. <laughs> are, we, are we talking this morning? Amen. Uh, Jesus needed to die as a curse on the tree. So he couldn't die. If he died on the streets, there would be no salvation for man. He had to die on the cross. 
So even salvation need a burden bearer to take this blood from the street, from the Via Dolorosa to the cross. Salvation couldn't take place on the street. Some of you can't be left where you are. You need a burden bearer, a Simon of Cyrene to carry you to the place where you ought to be. Don't despise those burden bearers who come to you along your Via Dolorosa to want to carry you into your Golgotha. Every one of us, we need either those three women or we need that one John. Don't despise them. And they are not there all the time. They are like bulletproof vests, invisible, but invaluable. Oh yes. They protect you, but you don't see them. These are the burden bearers. Don't despise them. Know who they are. Don't get, 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 don't get rid of them. And in most cases, could be your mother. Could be your mother's sister. Like Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. Could be a disciple that put his head on, on your shoulder at that table. The ones that are close to you will carry you. You can stand this morning. That's a weak clap. Even the people online, I can hear them. <laughs> Amen. Are you ready this morning? Burden bearers. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. They, they're doing this, this on Saturday. If you need the anxiety, there's, there's going to be all kinds of psychological help given to you. You must register. It's free, but... It will help you. They have good speakers that are going to speak to you on that area. Listen to me. David. We know of his strength. But we don't know of his anxiety. And his depression. We read of him as a strong king. But his father never acknowledged him. His father sent him every morning with a few sheep. The Bible says with a few sheep. Ah, when the prophet came to anoint, he brought all of his sons, but he left David out. Can you imagine the heart of David? To be rejected by your own father, not to be considered by your father. He was not wanted in that family. David had this prob problem of not being wanted anywhere. When he got married to Michelle, she didn't want him. That's why when Saul, who abused him so much, Saul wanted to kill him. But at least Saul sent for him. His father never sent for him. But Saul, who was abusing him, wanting to even kill him, at least Saul, when he was going through some problem, he said, bring your violin and play for me. And that's why as soon as Bathsheba looked, even with one eye, he said, at least I feel wanted. Because he's going through life unwanted, 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 wanted. He took it. But his life was one of brokenness. If you read the letter of his heart, he was not happy. He lost his, his child. He was broken. That's why the Bible says, David wrote, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's a topic for us. But I come there, Judy, to tell you that in his depression, he goes into a cave. I'm not sure who's in a cave this morning. And who feels like cavemen? You smile on the outside like David, but you're bruised on the inside. 
Some of you are going through some things in your life. On the outside, you look like you're all good like David. But inside, you're broken hearted. And you're crushed in spirit. I tell you that God is with you. In your cave and you may be in a doolum. Hear me now. I tell you that God is with you. And he'll bring burden bearers if he doesn't bring anybody. Shanisha, he'll bring the Holy Ghost. And he knows what you're carrying. And here, yes, it says, in 1 Samuel 22, 2, we see a group of men who are not noble knighthoods. Rather, they are malcontents, dregs of society, men on the run like David himself. And yet they form a rather formidable force of about 400 men that grows into 600. Finding David in depression at the cave of Adullam. You always need burden bearers who will stand with you in the day of your trouble. God. God knows who to bring to you. When to bring to you. And why to bring it. If you heard this morning, I'm ministering to you that God will bring people and He'll bandage you in the right place, in the cave of Adullam. Sometimes I feel Sometimes I fall To my knees and pray Come Jesus, come Come Jesus, come Let today be the day. Sometimes I feel like I'm gonna break, but I'm holding on to a hope that won't. For time, we are going to pray this morning and then we're going to sing again. We're going to pray that God is going to streamline the entry of people into your life. Did you hear me? Not everybody in your life should be in your life. Yes. Judges chapter 8 of the 20, of the 22,000 to 10,000 to 300, it's saying that he can redefine the men and filter them into the ones who will carry the clay jars and blow the trumpets of your life to win. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But inside, uh, I pray that God is going to redefine the relationships in your life. Uh, not all relationships are good for you. Yes. For the specifics ahead, God knows who is needed in your life. Are we together this morning? Summer drains and summer drain stops. Let me say that again. Summer drains and summer drain stops. Some are pulling out God's blessing from you so that nothing can accumulate. Like a stopper in a sink. I pray today that God is going to put a drain stop over your life. Uh, and that which the enemy is using through people to suction out of your life, it will stop today. From this pulpit, uh, I declare it. I decree it this morning that it must stop. Uh, the drain must stop. Some of you don't have the courage to even put that stopper on that place. This morning I pray that God is going to give you the, 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 the wisdom, the intel. Oh yes. And God will send to you a woman of Zarephath. God will send to you a Simon of Cyrene. And God will send you a slave girl like he did to Naaman to show you where your blessing is. Enough is enough. Today by this message, this thing stops. Today, by this message, those that shouldn't have access to you, I cancel it. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. 
I prayed, I prayed. Shagarabo shekete. Lift your hands if something resonates with you. I want you to put it in the atmosphere and then we're going to take two minutes uh, and then I'm going to dismiss you. Go ahead. If you're watching online, it'll be a good time just to pray, God, redefine my life. Uh, there's a thing called reframe me. Reframe me. Take me out of this frame. Take my canvas uh, and put it, oh God, uh, in a new frame. Kandala bro shekete pray take 30 seconds just pray this morning God I pray that you will connect me you will bring influences towards me oh God I pray this morning you're going to cause gifted men and burden bearers to come into my life come Jesus come come Jesus come we've been waiting so long the day you return to heal every hurt right every wrong I need you right now come and turn this come turn around. this thing around Lord. sing prophetically this morning eh? sleep down I know this world is in hope come to you Your hands declare this morning. Say we've been waiting, we've been waiting so long for the day. Raise your hands as I bless you this morning. Father, we thank you today. I ask for heaven's seal over this word. Anything of God that is misinterpreted and read incorrectly, I pray God that you would solve it by your spirit. Let us leave of God encouraged, not bruised. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll be the lifter of our heads. Where things need mending, that you will suture it, you will stitch it, and bring it to life, I pray, in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you, and the Lord will keep you. The Lord will make His face to shine upon you. He'll set His countenance on your face, and He'll give you peace. By the true definition of peace, nothing will be missing, nothing broken, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We'll see you on Wednesday, if not Wednesday, Friday, if not Friday, we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you. We love you. Say my hands and the hands of God. They cannot be paralyzed. Say my eyes. They are the eyes of God. They cannot be blind.